listening to what we hope will be an ongoing series about matters that matter to Hadley residents. I want to do a technical thing first to make sure that you're all able to see and hear well. And that is that if you want to be meet, muted or want your video not to show, then you go to the lower left hand of your screen where it says mute and video and click on either one if you want to change that. Another option for you is to select the view you want. You can either have the speaker view, which means, as you can see, probably my box is yellow right now, an outline around it. It's if you wanted to only see the speaker, then hit speaker view. If you want to see everyone who's participating, as we're doing right now in my computer, you go to the gallery view. And finally, after our presentation today, we will take questions and hopefully suggestions for what you might like in a future, future series of Hadley Matters. And I wanna just take a little aside here to thank Diane Nevin-Smith for the clever title for this series, because many matters do matter to us. So thank you, Diane. We have today as our guests three of our town's employees or volunteers to talk about the topic of property taxes. First, we have Dan Zadonik, who is the principal assessor in Hadley and has been for more years than I've been alive, I think, Dan. <laughs> And after Dan does his business, we have Sue Glowatsky, who is the town collector of taxes. And finally, Jane Nevinsmith is here to talk to us about what your taxes are used for. Are there other things from my three guests before we start that we should go to? Got it covered then, okay. Our first speaker today will be Dan, the principal assessor for the town, who will be talking to us about how your tax bill is determined. Dan, take it away. I, the first thing I'd like to do is just go over a little bit of what the assessor's responsibilities are. Dan, can I stop you on if y'all are in the room together and everybody has their volume on, you're going to get that feedback the entire time. So one of you needs to have the volume on your computer and the rest of you in a room together need to have it turned off or separated quite away from each other, okay? I apologize for interrupting. Let, let's try again. The, the first thing I'd like to go over is what the assessor's responsibilities are. And the assessors administer state policies concerning valuation and taxes that are set forth by the state through the Department of Revenue. We discover and list and value all real and personal property in Hadley every year. We process building permits from the building inspector's office by going out and measuring any construction, any additions, or make any changes to the properties record cards to reflect what actually transpired from the building permit. And we also process motor vehicle excise abatement commitments. We get that information from the Registry of Motor Vehicles. We go through it, clear it up a little bit, clean it up a little bit, give it to the collector's office, and then they print the bills and mail them out. The one thing that we do not do is the assessors do not create values. Our office interprets market changes to establish an estimate of each property's market value as of the assessment date, which is January 1st of each year. When and how property is assessed. Residential value properties are assessed using the sales comparison approach. We basically look at all the sales that took place in the prior calendar year. And we break those down into different categories, style, age, size, condition, quality, there's a whole bunch, probably 40 or 50 different characteristics. And those are broken down 
on each property. And then that information from that information, we determine a what we call a base rate for each style of home. That is then applied to everybody's house in town by style to determine a new assessed value for everyone. We have minimal discretion as to when we can or when we reassess properties. The level state law mandates that that the median assessment sales ratio, which is the sales, the assessed value divided by the sales price, has to be between a certain level, 90% and 110% on the state level. And subclasses, which would be style, size, uh, age, grade, they all have to be within 5% of what our median is. If the ratios don't work out to that, the state requires or mandates that we reassess property each year until the ratios work. The assessment date is January 1st of the calendar year. So for fiscal 21, the year we're in right now, it's actually January 1st of 2020 was the assessment date. And for fiscal 21, the assessed value is as of January 1st, 2020, and we use only calendar year 19 sales because we had enough sales. They want us to have at least 40 sales in any one year or 2%, whichever is greater. And we can only use one year. If not, we have to go back and use the prior calendar year as well. Commercial property is assessed differently than residential. That's done mostly on the income approach. What we do is every year, and we just did this earlier in the week, we sent out we send out income and expense questionnaires to all the commercial property owners. From the questionnaires that we get back, we develop market rent tables and expense tables for each type of property. We then use those that information to determine a net income for each what each building owner, if they rented out their property, would get. And we capitalize that using what's called the income approach. That results in somewhat different values than if there was a sales approach, but it's really tough if you take Hampshire Mall or Mountain Farms Mall to find comparable sales of that type or even gas stations or a convenience store. We only have about 40 to 50 residential sales. Each year we'll get about four or five commercial sales in town. Can I ask a question about assessing residential real estate? Yep. Do you sometimes do that in person or is that always done just based on what you know about the house from prior years? Every 10 years or so, the state wants us to go out and look at properties at least once. What we do is when a house sells, we will go out and look at, at the sales house, the, prop, the house that sold, and then we'll take certain areas oh. and we'll go out and we'll look. It might just be an exterior quick look mm -hmm. at the card, look at the house, what's changed, if has anything changed. And a lot of times over the course of the 10 years, most people have a building permit. Okay. That they pulled. So we're, we end up covering probably about 90% of that over the course of regular business. And are you the only person in town that does that? Yeah, I've got the, the office. There's only me and there's a part-time clerk that's shared with three other offices. Thank you. Uh, another thing I'd like to get into is how the pandemic has impacted values. And when COVID first started, we really thought that values would drop because of this. And actually residential values have had the opposite effect in town. The first three to four months of 2020, we saw values drop about 4%. But from May through the end of December for 2020, values in town have gone up approximately 15% from that point in, in April. And that means your next tax bill will reflect that higher market value? It might, and it might not. Oh, okay. Sharon, Sharon, I'm having trouble hearing your questions. Sharon, your volume is down, so they're having trouble hearing your questions. It's, it's, that's, no, it's, you're, you're muted. The, 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 the problem is, is that Sharon and Dan are in the same room. So when Sharon's not yeah. muted and Dan's speaking, it echoes. So to stop the echo, I unmute 
her. You hear me now? You hear me now? And, and then, then she, she asked the question to do it. it. Did everybody get that? Can you repeat again, Jennifer? Yes. So when y'all are talking to each other in the same room, one of you needs to be muted while the other one's talking. And as you continue to talk with both computers on, the feedback's going to come and nobody can hear. Okay. Okay. Yeah, can you repeat the question? There we go. There's one other thing that's going on, and that is if the speaker volume is high on our speakers here, we'll get a, a delayed replay of what the other person is saying. So this also needs to go down as well as unmute when you're not speaking. Okay, as well as mute when I'm not speaking. Yeah. yeah. Well, forgive us our technical idiocy. <laughs> we'll get it though, we will get it. Part of the deal is that we are trying to record this to archive it in town. And part of it is that this is our first run through. So you're our test case and we appreciate your patience and feedback. And Dan, you were talking about, I wish I could remember. <laughs> <laughs> Another problem. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it back to Dan, let him take it. <laughs> Yeah, the, the values may or may not increase. It depends on the number of sales that we have for calendar year 20. If we don't have enough, we'll have to go back and use calendar year 19, which will result in approximately the same sales ratio that we had last year. So values could stay the same or they're gonna go up about 10% for next year. That in itself won't have an impact on, on taxes because I'll get into that a little bit later on with the levy limit and how much we can actually raise. Commercial property values were impacted by COVID-19 in the way we figured they would be. By using the income approach and capitalizing rents, with all the forced closures that we've had of restaurants, bars, gyms, movie theaters, it's reduced the amount of rent that the landlords can actually charge. So we're looking at next year, probably having to reduce commercial values based on calendar year 20 income and expense. We'll get a better idea as to how much once we get the income and expense ratios back or reports back in the next two months when they come in. Lower commercial that, that might have an impact on how much you pay because lower commercial value will mean that some of the taxes will be shift, shifted from commercial onto residential, which there was a slight impact this year with that issue, which is why, well, this year we went with a lower tax rate and I'll get into that in a little bit as well. But if we hadn't gone with a lower tax rate, the taxes would have gone up quite a bit for the average homeowner in town. The next thing is what are property taxes? And property taxes are based on the property's value and not the owner's ability to pay. It's not considered to be like an income tax. In Hadley, the property tax represents about 55% of the total budget. And for fiscal 21, our tax levy is just over $12.6 million. What is Proposition 2.5? Proposition 2.5 was passed in 1980 and it limits the overall increase in the tax levy to 2.5% plus any new growth, which would be if someone builds a new house, what they would have paid in taxes for the last year gets added to the tax levy. This 2.5% increase applies to the town as a whole and not to anyone's individual taxes. So a lot of people will come into my office and go, oh, my taxes went up 4% this year or 5%. Under two and a half, it can only go up two and a half, and we tell them no, it's based on the total revenue that the town can take in and not any one individual property tax. Jennifer, if you can put the slide up for, for the levy limit for this year, that would be great. What this slide is, is this was used for our, our classification hearing back in November. 
and it shows what last year's levy limit was of 11 million six. The two and a half percent increase was 290,000. We had 164,000 in new growth, which brought our levy subtotal to 12 million 77,000. We had an additional thousand or $1,030,000 in overrides, which were approved by voters in prior fiscal years that are still being paid off. That gave us a total levy of $13,107,695. Our levy, the actual levy that we're raising this year is $12,608,000. So we're, that's a roughly $500,000 less than what it would have been. And that means that the average house is paying about $164 less in taxes this year than what they would have last year. The levy ceiling for us is 24542000 And that, that's the maximum amount that we can raise under two and a half if we had a $25 tax rate, which is two and a half percent of the total value of everything in town. That's pretty much all I have for. <laughs> Dan, that is far beyond my comprehension. And I think you're not nearly paid what you're worth. I don't know how much you're paid. <laughs> it's incredibly complicated. I would suggest that we take a minute while this is fresh in our minds. And if you have a question, type it in now before we take the camera over to Sue because we're going to switch to how do they get collected. So if you have questions for Dan, not that we'll answer them right now, but we'll have just a minute for you to do the typing for it and for Dan and Sue to switch off the camera so that when Sue comes to how the taxes are collected, she'll be on screen. <laughs> oh, I went to chat. I have to tell you why I laughed. I went to chat to see if there was a question there. And what's on the screen is, you look lovely, Sharon. <laughs> I don't know who that's from, but I'm grateful. Maybe it was the computer who said it. Okay, any questions for Dan? Finish off typing them. And we're going to take it to our town tax collector, the person we all love dearly. <laughs> so Sue, take it away. Okay, hi everyone, it's good to see you all. Um, so once Dan has uh, completed the valuation process uh, in the assessing system, the file is transferred over to my office. Uh, Hadley Bit Real Estate and Personal Property are billed quarterly, uh, the due dates being August 1st, November 1st, February 1st, and May 1st. Um, our fiscal year is from July 1st through June 30th of any given year. Uh, our first and second quarter bills, the ones due in August and November, are what are known as preliminary bills. Uh, as, uh, the as the tax, tax rate, rate hasn't, hasn't been set yet, yet uh, it wouldn't be set until after, after fall town, town meeting. meeting. I, have I have a sample of, of what our preliminary, preliminary bill looks, looks like. like. Jennifer, Jennifer, you can pop, pop that, that up. up. Okay. We have music. There we go. <laughs> My phone, sorry. Um, so as you can see, um, and let me just grab bill. Our bills are now green, and the preliminary bill is a legal size sheet of paper with the top stub being due uh, this year. It was August 3rd. Uh, and the next stub up, is due on November 2nd. 
Um, and in this sample, this is my bill. So um, the amounts due are calculated based on 50% of the previous year's tax bill. Uh, so in this case, my taxes for fiscal year 2020 were 6,164.26, with 50% of that amount being $3,082.13. Split over the two quarters generates, and as you can see under the total assessment down here, generates a bill of $1,541.07 for first quarter and $1,541.06 for second quarter. Um, once spending has been approved at Fall Town Meeting, the tax rate approved by the mass uh, and the tax rate is approved by the Mass Department of Revenue. We issue third quarter bills. I will typically mail these. Um, sorry, but the day after Christmas. <laughs> um, and the reason I do this is because we have a number of taxpayers who want to pay their third and fourth quarter bills prior to the end of the calendar year, so that they can take the deduction on their income tax in in that calendar year. Um, third quarter taxes are due on February 1st and um, fourth quarter bills are due on May 1st. Uh, the amount for the third and fourth quarter taxes uh, calculated um, are taking the full amount of the tax, tax due with the new tax rate, less amount paid less amounts paid by the preliminary bills and split the balance between the last two quarters. We're also asked quite often, uh, what is the CPA that is listed on our bill? Uh, CPA stands for Community Preservation Act. This is a surcharge of 3% on real estate bills that was approved at the annual town meeting in fiscal year 2005. Uh, this benefits the town as the state matches amounts collected in varying percentages. Uh, there have been years where we have received a 52% match. Uh, early on, we were receiving 80 and 90% matches, which um, which was really beneficial. <laughs> um, these funds collected are segregated uh, and can only be used for three specific categories, historic preservation, open space and recreation, and affordable community housing. Um, each quarter, I will post a reminder on the town website when taxes are due. If you have access to a computer, which obviously all of you do, you can sign up for reminder emails as well. Uh, on our website, www.hadleyma.org, you click on the yellow bubble, and Jennifer's going to put up, uh, you click on the fifth yellow bubble in that says subscribe to news. And, uh, and then you fill out just your email address and what you would like, um, whether you want to receive alerts or town news. There's also, there's three, I think there's three categories. Jennifer, do you have that second page? There you go. So if you click town alerts and town news and announcements, you will get a, a reminder email when your taxes are due, including water and sewer bills and the first commitment for excise tax. That's particularly helpful with the um, second quarter bill because you already have that bill in July. A lot of people tend to miss that November payment if they haven't signed up for email alerts. Um, and if you're ever curious, geez, did I miss something or, um, you know, is there something due? Now that water and sewer bills are due quarterly, we only have three months in the collector's office where something isn't due. Um, and those uh, three months are January, July, and October. But you can always call our office. We'll, we'll let you know if something's due. Um, we're also, we will enter into payment uh, arrangements with our taxpayers. Uh, I have numerous payment plans. I have people who um, prefer to budget weekly or monthly rather than pay a quarterly bill. Uh, and we're happy to work with, with you folks. Um, we're fortunate we have one of the best collect, uh, collection rates in the state. Um, any given year, I collect between 99.4 and 99.7% of all of our taxes. 
Um, so then, actually, that speaks volume uh, to the character of, of our residents. That I appreciate all you folks. And that's about all I have. That's wonderful, Sue. Thank you. That was very clear. Do we pay you too? You're not <laughs> getting what you deserve either. <laughs> okay, again, would you like to take a moment? And if you have questions, we have begun to get a few in. And uh, Sue will come back and answer them, or Dan or Jane or whoever is the most appropriate. And finally, Jane, representing our select board, will talk with us about Hadley taxes, how are they used? Everything you wanted to know, right? <laughs>
mustard brown. I would call it baby poop, baby but <laughs> that's my thing. Um, and that's an unclassified because it includes retirement, workers' compensation insurance, unemployment insurance, health insurance, life insurance, Medicare, police and fire accident insurance, and contributions to build up the OPEB, OPEB fund balance. The next highest expenditure is public safety, which includes our wonderful police and fire departments. Enterprise funds are blue, and they include Hadley Media, the water and the sewer enterprise funds. The black is state and other assessments that are required that we pay. Um, the rose color, it's not really rose, uh, brown, I'll go brown, is debt and interest. Up at the very top, is the general government expenses. Department of Public Works is yellow down at the bottom. Human services are green, or yeah, over on the left, and that's uh, Board of Health, Council on Aging, and Veteran Services. Culture, recreation, culture and recreation are dark blue, and they include the library, the Park Commission, and the Historical Commission. I have no idea how these categories were made, but I know that they have numbers that everybody refers to in terms of how things are charged against the account. Just a quick question, Jane, on the senior center, since many of our watchers today are from the senior center. Where does the senior center fit into the budget? Oh, less than 1%. And would that be in that last That's in category? that green, the 1.19%. Okay. Over and there you're... at about 8 o'clock on the chart. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to share another chart with you for a moment, the organizational chart of the town. Jennifer had it up earlier. It will be right back. <laughs> this, this really shows what kind of that we have a town meeting kind of town and that the voters are totally responsible for what goes on in town. As you can see when this chart gets up, the voters select everything on the top line. This one, here it comes, there it comes. Okay, can you make that larger and centered please? There we go, perfect, thank you. Okay, so the voters are up at the top. Whoops, the voters went away. There they go. <laughs> um, so the voters vote for select board, school committee, planning board assessor, tax assessors, tax collector, town clerk, moderator, park and recreation, library trustees, housing authority, board of health and other officers. Down underneath, you can see um, the green, which is a different green, they're not, it's looking blue mostly, um, are paid positions. And there are elected positions that are paid and there are elected positions with stipends that are different. For instance, the select board is elected but does not get a stipend or is not paid. Um, and there's one committee that's appointed and that's the finance committee. And they're appointed by the um, moderator. So under the select board are the town administrator and all the different departments. Under the school committee is the school superintendent and the school department. So it's, it's a very top heavy, if you will, organizational chart showing that everybody is really responsible to the voters of the town. Um, so there are two, way, two messages to take away from this chart. One is, oh no, go back. Um, this, all, this chart also shows that those volunteer positions, if the town had to pay for those positions, our budget would be much higher. So currently annual salary and benefits to the town are approximately $13,200,000. 
which is 57% of this year's budget. So two takeaways from this message. One is people care about Hadley and you should thank the people who serve on town committees. And two, you should consider volunteering for a committee. We need you, thanks. <laughs> thank you, Jane, wonderful. All right, this is the time and we will take your questions. I have seen some come up on my screen. Jennifer, I'm a little lost in our technology again. And I would like our folks to answer the questions. And I know you can't, we're not allowed to be too close to each other, but it. The first, first question okay. is from Hillary but Price from, from for Dan. Dan. She, she says, says she you. say it again, I'm sorry. The, the first, first question, question is for Dan, Dan from, from Hillary Price. Price. She, she says, says okay, the first question is for Dan, who was moving to the computer right now. Okay. Dan, Dan let me know we're ready. We're ready, Jennifer. All right. All right. So, so Hillary, Hillary says she, she got, got here late. late. I've so said it. So um, she's, she's new to town. She just moved here in August. Welcome. Um, do you have to create the tax rate for houses based on what it was sold for? The values are, are of houses that sold. We don't adjust houses that sell to the sale price. Those are thrown into the pool for the next year's valuation. So if, if you bought a property and paid $50,000 more than, than the assessed value or $100,000 more than the assessed value, and everything in town is that's sold is selling for fifty dollars to $100,000 more, that will in turn raise everybody's assessments by the fifty dollars to $100,000 when we revalue property the next year. Hope that answers your question, Di. I understood, thank you, Dan. Um, I always assume um, if I understand it, everybody does, but that ain't always right, is one it? One other <laughs> thing that I'd like to, I didn't, don't see a question on it, and that that is exemptions. And two years ago, the town, at town meeting, we proposed passing a clause 17D exemption. And that that is, probably the most liberal exemption that we have in town for taxes. And it's only $175 that you can get off your taxes. But if you were 70 years old as of July 1st of last year and have less than $40,000 in assets, not counting your home, you can contact my office and we'll mail you out a form. If you fill that out and get it back in by the end of the month, you can get $175 off of this year's tax bill. Excellent. We, we passed it two years ago, and we've only had one person each year apply. Yeah. Everybody got that. Don't lose that hundred seventy-five dollars. The restaurant's open; it'll buy you a meal. Jennifer, next question. Next question is from Gladys Nicholson. She wants to know why did the water bill switch to quarterly, and why is there a lag? Water bill the. Select Board, as Water and Sewer Commissioners, responded to the um, Water Sewer, um, or the Director of the DPW, um, he was looking to um, have a more even flow of revenue. So they decided going quarterly would, would provide that. Um, as far as a lag, um, Gladys, that has changed. Uh, we are doing our readings much closer to the billing time now. When we first started, we were trying to get on a schedule where everything would be just about three, three months. And it took us a long time to get there. And so now we've shifted so that the read time is much closer to the billing period. Excellent, Sue, thank you. Okay, Jennifer, another question? That's for me. <laughs> it's for Sue also. That's a good thing. Next question is from Margaret. And Margaret, I'm not going to butcher your last name because that would be rude. So it's from Margaret. This question is also for Susan. And she says, I might have missed this, but you said that 50% of our tax bill comes from the previous year's tax bill. What is the basis for the other 50%? Thanks. 50% of the preliminary bills determine... Uh, from the previous tax year, determine what the preliminary bills are. So if my bill was $6,000 last year for last fiscal year, 3,000 
the, the preliminary bills have to equal 3,000, so 1,500 per quarter. The other 50% is once the tax rate is sent, you have your valuation, so you know what your new annual tax rate is, or your new annual tax bill is. Um, and you take that new total, subtract out the $3,000 that was paid for the preliminary, and then the balance of that is, is split by two for third and fourth quarter. It's, <laughs> it's no, kind of confusing. No, it's very clear, <laughs> Sue. It's very clear. Thank you. Jennifer, another question? Don't see any more. I have a question. Uh-oh, Jane's got one. Oh, Take it away. No. So my question for Sue is, could you please explain enterprise funds? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Never heard of them. The enterprise funds are, are specific specifically water and sewer and Hadley Media. Um, it's primarily funds that uh, have users, not taxpayers, their user fees. Uh, so for instance, the users, anybody who is on the water system, your fees have to pay for all of the operational expenses of the water department. You're on sewer, your fees have to pay for the operational expenses of the sewer department. Uh, Hadley Media is a little bit different because they get their funding through charter. But again, those are user fees based on charter subscriptions or spectrum now. Perfect. Answers the question. Any more questions? I would also welcome feedback. As you are well aware, you were our guinea pigs for the first time we've tried this, and I appreciate that. And if you have any suggestions, either as to content, we would happily invite folks for that. Also, for the whole technical end of it, uh, I think it went about as smoothly as we could hope for a first run through. And I want to very much thank Dan, Sue, and Jane who are the heart of the town, and to compliment you all, I'm just so impressed by the tax collecting in this town, how it's done, how it's collected, and how cognizant it is of the residents and the needs. So thank you all for that. If there are any more questions, any more input, please feel free to send it to Violet at COA Programs or give us a call. I would welcome anything that uh, will make this better because we're hoping to do it at least once a month. And hopefully in person soon. And hopefully <laughs> still without masks. So thanks again and goodbye to all.